For the bottom of the page, I don't want to color grass everywhere, so I'm going to pretend it's a path. To be able to add some shadows, I'm going to draw a few pebbles on the floor. I draw it freehand with a Stadler pigment liner size 0.2. I don't add too much, it's just to be able to add some shadows, otherwise the color will be a little bit too uniform. We can give an effect of perspective by adding a pebble like that and a smaller one behind. We can even add a third one. It gives the impression that we are advancing toward the house. I apply a first layer with Naples yellow. Knowing that the path is lighter on the way to the house, and to give a perspective effect, I draw a lighter area in a trapezoid shape. I apply a light background of Naples yellow everywhere. And then, I darken the edge of the path with terracotta. And also a little bit in there too, to make some unevenness. Then I blend everywhere with my Naples yellow. I replay the sequence to equalize and then I'll add some shadows with a darker color. My yellow is a little too flashy for my taste. I don't want it to eclipse the house and so to fade it I blend the yellow with white. Well, it's up to you, you do as you prefer. The shadows are always very important.
As the light comes from here, I will shade each element of the decor towards here, and in this direction here. It doesn't have to be the precise shape of the elements of the decor, since, as I told you when we made the windows, the light is diffuse. Diffuse lights give diffuse shadows. And now I soften slightly with the terracotta. For my little stones, you know my color sequence. I show it here for you as a reminder. If I think that a color is too dark, I fade it with the next color. So here in this case with slate gray. To polish it up and give my path a little more realistic look, I'm going to use the Stadler 3 Plus Fine Liner. I have a box of 42 colors, which is more than enough for what I want to do. And I will take here in the box three colors close to the color of the ground. On the 3 plus fine liner, it's difficult to see, but we have a number which is engraved in it. So if you want to use the same number, here I use the number 48. The number 29. And the number 76. Here I see that you can see this number better. I will try to zoom in to show it to you. Here you see above the thumbnail the number of the color. Quite simply I just add little dot here and there mainly in the shadows but also a little in the other areas. The 3 plus fine liner have a lighter effect when they are dry. So when you add the little dots, don't worry if they are a little bit too dark, they will lighten 
as did y. In the shadows, I add a lot of small dots, and in the light areas, I add only a few. You can use this technique if you want to color sand. Of course, for the sand, you'll have to use lighter color than these ones. But these techniques gives a very good look with the sand. Here, I take my second color, and I'm going to add a little bit in the same places. And then I do the same with my third color. I add a fourth color, a little bit lighter. So here it's the number 007. And I add it here where my path is too light to add dark colors. And that's it for the access and the path that leads to our fairy house. You are probably wondering why I haven't colored the roof yet. Well, it's because I intend to make luminous balls in the sky and probably I'll want them to be reflected on the roof. So I have to add the bright balls first. I'll add them with ivory. It's a color from Faber-Castell. And it's a color that really allows a lot of things. And that doesn't exist in Prismacolor. In particular, it allows to make a bright halo in the dark. We can add a little bit of yellow in the center, but it's not always necessary. And so we will see when we have finished the background if it's necessary to add a little bit of yellow inside my light balls. I add a ball here under my drooping tulip. As if the light emanated from the tulip. That's why I add yellow lines inside the flower, so that is as if the light passed through the petals. It's okay, I added luminous balls a little everywhere and that explained that I'd use yellow on many of my flowers and vase, even in the leaves here. It's 
on the purpose that the light is reflected a little everywhere in my coloring. For the background, I'll make a night sky with stars. Well, I think about another idea. It's from here, you have a ray of light that comes through the door, so I'll have to add it with um, first terracotta. <laughs> you see the tail of my kitten Paddy. Okay, so I have to darken the path a little with terracotta. And then I take the electric eraser and I trace a ray of light to have... Oh, hello Paddy, how are you? No, 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 don't take my place. Wait, I have to sit down. It's his speciality. It takes my place as soon as I am standing. Okay, you can see here I trace the ray of light with the electric eraser. Now it's my second kitten, Plume, which comes to make shadows on my page. My two kittens are in the office and they both want to color with me. Now I add a little bit of yellow on my ray of light. Paddy is in his box. Good boy. Well, it's a shoe box. It becomes a little too small for him. I think I'll have to buy boots to have a bigger box. Especially since the kittens, they like to go inside together. Both of them. Well, it becomes difficult, but they still manage it, even if it's difficult. Now, let's start the roof. So for the roof, I'm going to take almost the same sequence as for the wall, but darker. So be careful. Here, it's not the color I used earlier for the shadows on the wall. Earlier, I used Caput Motum, and here I take Caput Motum Violet. It's darker. Then I take Venetian Red, Dark Flesh, Deco Peach from Prismacolor, and finally Light Yellow Glaze to add a little light on the bottom of the tiles. Something important to say when you get to the end of a coloring page, and that's what I said to myself when I made the plants here and the flowers, is that when you get to the end, you, should not, you shouldn't keep adding colors. Here I added all the colors that I wanted, and I am on the end of the page. It's not necessary to create new colors. Otherwise, you add again something extra and it can and it can give the impression that there are too many colors. And when there are too many colors, finally, the eye does not know where to watch. It's too much. And you no longer have the highlighting on certain elements of the page. Here, the front of the house is the most important element of my page. That's why it's the very first one that I colored, because I wanted to build the other colors from it. I don't want the eyes attracted elsewhere than on the front of the house. That's why I took for the roof the same shades as the front, but a little bit darker. So I keep an harmony on the page. I didn't use a lot of blue on my coloring page. It's because I'm going to make the sky blue 
a night blue and I don't want too much blue on my page. That's why I didn't use a lot of blue on the page. Even is blue is my, is my favorite color. With each color, I go over the previous one to have a nice blending. Of course, it reduces the shadows, but don't worry, once we have finished all our blending, we'll put some shadows back and it will be very dark again on the shadows. Here I add a little bit of Venetian red on each tiles. It's because the grain of my paper is not completely filled and I want it to be completely filled. So I add a little bit of Venetian red and I think it gives a nice effect because then my tiles becomes a little bit redder, a little bit more red. Of course, you do as you want. If you find your roof is perfect like that, you don't have to add a second layer of Venetian red. Now it's time to accentuate the shadows. This is very important to do at the end, so I don't think it's an option. <laughs> I think it's very important to do it now, because accentuating the shadows 
It's what it gives the 3D effect to your page. It gives the impression that the drawing pops out of the page to come to meet you. And that's precisely the impression that I want to give when I color a page. So I really do all what is needed to accentuate the shadows. Here I add a little bit of yellow to make the reflex of the light balls in the sky. And here I add a little bit of yellow to make the reflection of the window. Here too. And here also. You don't have to add a lot of yellow, but it's important that the light is reflected on the elements that are around. That's what will give the realistic look of your light. Here I add a little bit more yellow because it's just below the window. Here we are, I think we can say we have finished the coloring page. The next part will be the background. So I'll make a few test pages and then I'll coming back to you with the part 4, the background of this beautiful coloring page. We'll make a night sky with different intents and soft pastel. See you soon on the next video. Happy colorings!